What's happening guys, it's Evan Source, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can build an affordable gaming PC to game comfortably in 1080p. This build is going to cost you around $450 and if you want to see the performance of this PC and how it handles most of the games out there, make sure to check out the benchmark video which I will link below. By the way, you guys can use this build guide for any PC. You don't have to have the exact same parts as I do because the installation process is pretty much the same across all computers, even if you have a different processor. So before we begin, obviously you will need a screwdriver to install the components, also a large surface area to work with, uh, preferably something that doesn't generate static like a wooden surface for example. I also recommend using some sort of a tray to hold the screws in, that way it doesn't roll around and get lost. I don't have a tray with me now, so I'm going to be using this mug instead. And finally, you guys will need an 8GB USB stick, uh, because this is where we're going to be installing the Windows operating system in. So make sure you guys have at least 8 gigs. But yeah, other than that, I think we pretty much have everything else. Let's begin the build guide. All right guys, so before we begin, this is what you'll need to do. Take out the motherboard and put it on top of its box. When you guys are handling the motherboard, always grab it from the sides. Do not touch the back side and do not touch any of the components on top. You'll also need the IO shield and take out the SATA cables that come uh, inside the motherboard. One for each drive you are connecting. We are connecting one hard drive, so we're going to need one SATA cable. Uh, other than that, obviously you'll need your screwdriver and we're going to need the CPU as well. Where is it? Here it is. So yeah, you'll need the CPU and the heatsink. Now, step one is to pop the CPU inside the cover. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So what you guys are going to have to do is match the gold triangle to the triangle on the actual cover. So mine is located over here. Simply just lift the lever up, open the cover. Once again, make sure the triangle on the CPU is matching the triangle on the board itself and just gently place it down. Do not apply any force, let it gently uh, sit on the socket. Once it's fully seated, lower the cover and then just lock it in place by lowering down the lever. This plastic piece usually pops off. If it doesn't, don't worry about it, just peel it off. All right, now we're ready to install the RAM. So grab uh, your RAM sticks, whether you have one or two, and we're basically gonna install them on the motherboard. And here's how you do that. You can open these up on the side, and if you only have two RAM slots and you're installing two RAM sticks, obviously just insert them. You don't have to worry about what order they go in. You guys are gonna have to match the gap in the RAM with the notch on the actual slot. So as you guys can see, that does not match. So I'm gonna flip it around and it matches this way. So what I'm gonna do is gently lower the RAM stick down evenly and apply pressure from the top until it snaps in place. Just like that. If it snaps in place, you'll see that it's locked and fully seated from the side. So basically you do the same thing for your other RAM stick. Apply pressure at the same time, boom. Locked in place, you're good to go. Now if your motherboard has four RAM slots and you only have two sticks, then there's a certain order you have to install them on your board. Uh, it's usually written right on the motherboard itself on which slots to occupy first. And you can also find that exact diagram on the motherboard manual. All right, now it's time to install the heatsink. I'm using the stock heatsink that came with our CPU. If you guys are using a third party cooler, make sure to follow the instructions listed in the manual uh, so that you can install that instead. Now, to install the heatsink, it's very simple. All you have to do is match the four pins to the four holes on the motherboard. Make sure you position it in a way that the cable reaches the CPU fan header on the top here. Oh, one more thing guys, uh, the heatsink usually comes pre-applied with thermal paste as you guys can see, so there's no need to actually put in thermal paste. However, if your cooler does not come with thermal paste, it's very important to apply some in the center of the CPU. All right, so once the four pins are aligned with the holes, just gently lower it down and do not apply any force. Make sure it just sits flush. Once it's sitting down on the CPU, you can then push down on each pin in a crisscross pattern. So I'm gonna start off with this one. Then we're gonna move across to this one. You guys can hear it snap in place. Then this one. And then finally this one over here. All right, so now that the heatsink is installed, we're gonna grab the cable coming out of it and we're gonna hook it to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. So grab the cable with the white tip, make sure that the pins align with the holes and then gently insert it in, just like that. All right, now we're ready to put the entire thing inside the case. So go ahead and grab your case, put it flat on the desk. I'm gonna lower this a little bit. 
Now before we put the motherboard inside, we gotta install the IO shield. So here's what you're gonna have to do. Make sure that the three circles over here, or the holes, are facing the bottom of the case. As you guys can see, the holes are facing the bottom. I'm gonna turn it around this way and essentially just press on the shield until it snaps in place. The trick is to apply pressure on all four of the corners one by one until it all snaps in place, just like that. So if you did it correctly, you should see that the entire shield is kind of sticking out from the case. It's not sitting flush with the backside. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and remove the back panel of the case because this is usually where they put the, uh, the screws that you need to install the motherboard. So it's back here. Let's go ahead and remove it real quick. You're gonna need this bag of screws to install the rest of the components, so make sure to hold on to this. All right, I'm gonna put the case flat on the surface. So most cases have the standoffs already pre-installed inside there, so I don't have to do anything other than just lower down the motherboard. If your case does not have them installed, you have to grab these standoffs from the bag and basically install them in the exact spots you need to align with the holes on the motherboard. It's actually really easy to figure out where it goes. So just gently lower the motherboard down and don't place it down yet guys, just kind of hover it around and try and align the holes on the motherboard with the holes on the case. And that's how you'll know where to install the standoffs. All right, now it's time to lower the motherboard inside the case. Once again, guys, grab it from the side. You can even grab it from the heatsink as you lower it down. So make sure to align the IO back of your motherboard to the hole cut out from the IO shield. So gently lower it down. Make sure you're aligning the holes. Okay. If your motherboard aligns perfectly with the standoffs, you'll hear it snap in place. Uh, once you lower the motherboard and if, if it still moves around, as you guys can see, it's not budging anymore. So if your motherboard is still moving around, it's not sitting flush on uh, with the standoff. So make sure it is sitting flush, guys. All right, now it's time to secure the motherboard against the case and we're gonna do that by using these screws. You're gonna need five or six of these. Now we can screw them in one by one. Make sure you guys are tightening the screws with your wrist. Do not over tighten them. It does not have to be super tight. All right, so our case comes with a single fan and we're gonna hook this up right now. So instead of running the cable across the board and just plugging it down here, it's gonna look really dumb. So what I'm gonna do is route it behind the case for better cable management. So I'm gonna run it through here and then out from the bottom. And we're gonna hook it up to the fan header on the motherboard. This is what it looks like. Smash the pins and slide it in just like that. Now if your case has more than one fan or you're gonna be installing more fans in your PC, then you can use uh, the fan headers that look just like that on your motherboard and connect your fans to that instead. But for this build, we only have one, so that is all we need to hook up. All right, now it's time to install the power supply. So grab the power supply out of the box along with the small bag, which comes with four of these screws because we're gonna need them to hook up the power supply to the case. All right, so with the fan facing down and from the back of the case, we're gonna slide the power supply in just like this. And we're gonna line the holes on the back of the case with the holes on the power supply before we screw them in. All right, so once the holes are aligned, just insert the screw. Don't over tighten it just yet, guys. Just enough until the power supply is in place. And then you can go in and finish up tightening the rest of it. So once all four screws are in, then you can go back and tighten each one. All right, now it's time to hook up these storage devices. And I'm gonna show you guys how to install both a hard drive as well as an SSD, depending on what you're installing in your own PC. Uh, if you're gonna be installing your hard drive, make sure you guys grab the bag that says HDD. If you're gonna install an SSD, grab the bag that says SSD. Pretty straightforward. For the SSD, we're gonna need three of these screws and three of these rubber grommets. 
All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna slide the screw through the rubber grommet, just like this. Here's what it looks like. You're gonna install these screws on these three holes, guys. We're gonna leave this one empty. Okay, so once all three of the screws are installed, here's how you hook this up to your case. You're basically going to insert these screws inside the big hole first, and then we're gonna shift the entire SSD to the left, that way it locks in place. So here's what it looks like. Just like that. Shift it to the left and it locks in place. You guys can see it doesn't move. This isn't really required, but if you guys want, you can tighten the SSD uh, to the back of the case by screwing it in from this final hole over here. It's the same exact screw as the other three, but this is basically kind of like a safety measure so that the SSD doesn't pop out of place. So this case supports up to two hard drives, guys. You can mount it on the bottom of the case, you guys can see the cutouts, or on the top portion of the case, as you guys can see. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna show you guys how to install the hard drive on the surface over here. Now for the hard drive, it's the exact same process. The only difference is we're gonna be using the screws from the hard drive bag, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, so we're gonna get three screws and three grommets, just like last time. And we're gonna install them on these three holes over here. So these are the three screws we're gonna occupy and we're gonna leave this one empty. So with the screws facing upwards and the ports facing outwards, you guys are gonna insert it from the back like this while you align the screws with the bigger circle as you guys can see. So you're just gonna have to wiggle it around a little bit pop the rubber grommet through, just like that, and then slide it inwards. Just like that, you guys can hear it snap in place. Uh, just like before guys, you can use the fourth screw and tighten the hard drive uh, to the case if you guys want. All right, now it's time to hook up the cables to your storage device. So we're gonna need one SATA cable that came in the motherboard box and one of these, which is connected to the power supply. This is gonna be supplying the power to your SSD or your hard drive. So you guys are gonna need one of these each for each device you're plugging in. So if you're doing two drives, you'll need two of these and then two of these cables. Luckily, most power supplies have three of these connectors hooked up, as you guys can see. So here's what you're gonna do. So you're gonna be connecting the SATA data cable to the smaller portion behind the hard drive. By the way, guys, these connections are exactly the same for the SSD as well, so just follow along. You're gonna grab the cable and then insert it slowly in until it snaps in place. And now for the SATA power cable. Same thing, just hook it up from the back. These only go in one way, guys, so if it doesn't connect, obviously flip it around and try it the other way. So once it connects in, you're pretty much set. Now we're gonna be hooking up the other end of the SATA data cable into the motherboard. So I'm just gonna route it underneath here. We're gonna plug this cable into any of these SATA ports over here. I like to usually start off from the top, so just grab your cable, make sure the clip is facing outwards, and then insert it in until it clicks, just like that. All right, now it's time to hook up the cables to the motherboard. The first one we're gonna start off with is the 24 pin. So I'm gonna route it through here. Make sure both of these are connected together first before you insert it in. This plugs into the 24 pin socket on the motherboard. It's really hard to miss. Make sure the clip is facing to the right, by the way. If you guys are having trouble, just make sure to wiggle it around a little bit until it snaps in place. It's important that this cable is fully seated, guys, so make sure that there is no gap between the actual cable and the socket on the motherboard. Make sure the clip is fully seated. All right, the next cable is labeled CPU. I'm gonna run the cable from the back, from the top. We're only gonna connect one of the four pins to the socket on the motherboard. Slowly insert it in and then you'll hear it snap in place. Once again, make sure this cable is fully seated. Okay, next up is the USB 3 cable and this one has a blue tip. I'm gonna go ahead and route this one from here, same as the 24 pin cable. And this connects to the USB 3 header on the board, right over here. 
Be very careful with these pins, you guys. If you insert the cable at an angle, you can easily bend them and it's gonna be really hard to hook this cable up. So make sure you are inserting it straight in. Just like that. Next cable is the HD audio and this one plugs in to the far bottom left header. Okay, next cable is labeled USB and this one plugs in right underneath the USB 3 cable that we just connected. So it goes in right here. Okay, finally we're going to be hooking up these small cables for the front I.O. These actually plug in to the pins right underneath the SATA ports. Alright, so the first cable we're going to plug in is the reset switch. So with the letters facing to the right, we're going to plug it in to the third and fourth pin from the bottom right. Underneath that, we're gonna put the HDD LED. Once again, with the white letters facing to the right, I'm gonna plug it right underneath that. Now, directly to the left of the reset switch, we're gonna be plugging in the power switch. This one, it doesn't matter which direction it's facing. And then right below the power switch, we're gonna be plugging in the power LED minus. And then the furthest on the bottom is the power LED plus. Also guys, here's a quick diagram to show you where exactly to plug these pins in if you need additional help. All right guys, so now that you've finished plugging in all the cables, the final piece to completing the build is the GPU, of course. So before we plug that in, we're gonna have to remove one of the PCI brackets from the back. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew these real quick. So we're actually going to remove the top and the second PCI bracket. By the way guys, a quick tip, it's always recommended to install the GPU on the top PCI slot on your motherboard for optimum performance. So we're going to bring it up close, make sure it's aligned perfectly and snap it in place until you hear a click. Afterwards, grab one of the screws that you removed from the PCI bracket and tighten the GPU back in place. All right guys, so if you follow my instructions, this is what your PC would look like. Uh, this is usually the time where I would say uh, work on your cable management, but because the case doesn't have a clear side panel, it doesn't really matter because you're not going to see through it anyway. So if you guys want to spend time on cable management, if not, it doesn't even matter. If you guys know how to install your operating system and the drivers, then you don't have to watch the rest of the video. Uh, you guys can just end it here. But if you guys enjoyed the build guide and if it helped you at all to build a PC or if you even learned something, dropping a like would be awesome. But for those of you who want to know how to install Windows and drivers into your PC, then you're going to have to follow along. As mentioned earlier, you will need an 8 gigabyte flash drive as well as a computer or a laptop that has internet access. So grab your drive and head over to the computer that has internet access. Go ahead and plug in the flash drive into the PC and then follow these instructions. All right, so once the USB is inside the computer, we're going to have to download the Windows operating files. And to do that, you guys have to visit the website, which I will link down below. Uh, once you're on this page, you guys have to go down here where it says Create Windows 10 Installation Media. And we're going to be clicking on Download Tool Now. Once this is downloaded, go ahead and click on it and open it up. Give it a few moments for it to get ready and then you'll see the license and terms. Obviously go ahead and hit accept. So on this page, just make sure everything is correct. The language, edition, and the architecture. Uh, we are installing Windows 10, 64-bit. And then we're gonna hit next. And over here, we're gonna be selecting what media we're gonna be using. Obviously, we're gonna be installing the files on a USB flash drive. It says over here, you need at least eight gigs of space, just like I've said before. So make sure the USB flash drive option is selected. Hit next. And over here, you're obviously gonna click on the USB drive. You guys can go and double check what drive that is, but for me, it's gonna be uh, the letter E. So by default, it's already selected because that is the only thing plugged in. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next and let Windows do its thing. It's gonna go ahead and download the Windows operating system onto the USB. So this part might take anywhere from five to 10 minutes, depending on your internet speed. All right, so once all the files are downloaded and installed on the drive, you'll have a message saying that your USB flash drive is ready. All you guys have to do is just click finish and remove the USB from your PC. 
All right, so once you have your USB, go ahead and plug it into the PC that we just built. And then I'm gonna hit the power button to turn it on. Now, this is your first boot. You'll get a similar message like this that says uh, to hit F2 or delete to run setup or F1 to continue. So we're just gonna go ahead and F1. And it should automatically detect the USB drive and boot straight from the USB. So there you go, it detected the USB and the Windows operating files on there. So it's basically gonna take you to the Windows setup page. Okay, here we are in Windows setup. Uh, we're gonna go ahead next, install now. So this is where you would put in your Windows key. Um, if you guys didn't buy one, you can actually pick one up for around $20. It's really cheap. I'll drop a link down below. It's from scdkey.com. And if you guys put in the code TSS2, you can actually get an extra 10% off. So after you put in your Windows key, go ahead and hit next. All right guys, over here, we're gonna be selecting which operating system we want to install. Now this is really important. This has to match the same operating system as your Windows key. So the Windows key that I put in was actually for Windows 10 Pro, not the home edition. So whichever edition you have, make sure you select the correct one and then hit next. If you select the wrong one, then you're gonna get an error. So on this page, just hit the accept license terms and then hit next. Over here, it's very important. Make sure you guys click on custom. On this page, we're gonna be selecting where we want to install the Windows operating system on. Now, obviously we only have one drive. It's the one terabyte Seagate drive. So you're only gonna see one option on here. If you guys have additional drives, for example, an extra SSD or an M.2, then over here you can select which drive you want Windows to be installed on. I do prefer installing Windows on an SSD instead of a hard drive for faster boot and load times. So anyways, we're gonna be selecting our hard drive and then we're gonna hit next. And now we sit back and wait and let Windows install the operating system onto our hard drive. This process can take anywhere from 10 to even 30 minutes depending on the drive speed. So just sit back and relax and I'll be back once it's done. So once the files get installed to the hard drive, your PC will restart a few times until it finally takes you to the desktop. All right, so once you get to the screen, just follow the instructions on here and finish setting up Windows. Now you guys will need internet access once again. So if you don't have a Wi-Fi adapter or an ethernet cable to plug into your PC that you just built, then you can go back to your other laptop or PC that has internet access because we're gonna need that to download the drivers. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna skip this step. So once you finish all of that, it'll take you straight to the desktop. So once the setup is complete, it will take you straight to the desktop and you're pretty much done. The next step is to download and install the drivers and you guys can do that on your PC if you have internet access. Unfortunately, I don't have internet on this computer, so I'm gonna go back to my other PC, download the drivers on a USB stick and then bring it back and install it over here. All right, so here are the drivers that you need to install for your PC if you're using the same parts as I am. If you guys are using different parts, obviously go to the manufacturer's website, whether it's the motherboard or the graphics card, and download those drivers instead. So the motherboard we're using in the build is the B250M HDV from ASRock. So I'm on the ASRock website. Uh, we're gonna scroll down here, click on support, and then we're gonna be clicking on download. And these are the drivers that we're gonna need to download. So first up is the Realtek High Definition Audio Driver. So click on that for China. We're also going to download the Intel LAN driver, same thing, China server. And finally, the Intel management engine driver. Those are the three drivers we're gonna to have to download from the motherboard website. Next, we're gonna download the graphics driver. So since we are using an NVIDIA GPU, we're gonna download GeForce Experience. Once again, I'll drop a link to this website down below. So all you have to do is click on it and then go over here and click download. Once all the files are downloaded, just open them up, extract them to the desktop, and install them to your PC. It's very easy. Now, obviously, if you're using an AMD GPU, you're gonna have to go to the AMD driver's website and select which graphics card you're using. For example, let's just say it's the 500 series and the RX 580. You're gonna have to select that and then hit submit. Select which Windows you're using and then download the appropriate Radeon software. Make sure you guys are downloading the latest driver. For me, it's September 26, 2018, and just click on download. 
Once all the files are downloaded, just open them up and extract them to your desktop and install them. I'll show you guys an example because some of you are actually confused on how to extract files. So here's one of the drivers that I downloaded. I'm gonna open it up, double click on the setup. This window will pop up asking you to extract the files. We're gonna click on extract all. You can leave it on the default path, which is the downloads folder and just hit extract. Once everything's extracted, this window will pop up. Again, same exact thing, open it up and click on the setup. But this time, it's gonna ask you to install the drivers instead of extracting the files. There is one thing I forgot to mention about this PC and that is regarding the power plan. It is very important guys that you hit the Windows button, search for power plan and set it to high performance. By default, it's always set to balanced. What it does is once you set it to high performance, the PC will run at its full potential. If it's set to balanced or power saver, then it's gonna underclock a few things and the PC won't be running at its full potential like it should. So it's very important guys, make sure to switch that in the power plan options. And that wraps up the build guide. If you enjoyed the video or if it was at all helpful to you guys, dropping a like would be awesome. And if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to hit that dislike button as well.